let's move to demo in this demo we are using host os as a mac os uh, with intel processor then hypervisor vmware fusion the cpu we are giving is 4 and memory is 24 gb and storage is 120 so this is because of some storage restriction on the the host device we are giving 120 gb of storage but recommended is 250 gb to save our time i have recorded the installation process okay uh, otherwise it takes more than uh, one hour to install the curadar itself uh, you can go through the recording and i will uh, i will explain the uh, part where something needs to be done uh, while recording is going on so first thing we need to do is we need to install curadar on a vm uh, vmware fusion so i need to create a private network which so that i can give you a private ip to my cur my uh, curadar and i can access the same from my host machine so i have created this uh, vmnet2 uh, okay for this i need admin privileges so let me just enter the password and click ok now first thing is allow machines on this network to connect to external networks so my curadar which is installed in a vm should able to connect to network so that is the reason i am checking the first option then connect the host to mac to this network so that uh, i can access gui from my host mac and uh, access the curadar so i am checking this box and third is provide addresses on this network via dhcp and subnet mask with subnet ip which i am selecting is 192.168.1.0 with subnet mask 255.255.255.0 now once we select this and apply 192.168.1.1 ip will be given to my host machine and gateway is set to 1.2 now we will go ahead and in uh, create the virtual machine so install from the desk We will select the ISO which we have downloaded earlier uh, from the page uh, uh, earlier Curadar CE 101 page. We will continue. We will not use easy install. Continue. We will use legacy bias. We will customize the setting and change it to Curadar CE. And now it will create the VM and it will ask for us to change the configuration. So let's change the processors. We will set it to four processor. We will change memory to 24 GB. Okay, in hard disk, we will change it to we this need to be set to 250, but due to resource restriction, we are setting it to 120 okay and after this this is very uh, important uh, point where we need to change this to sata and pre allocate the disk this is required otherwise our installation will not proceed so we need to pre allocate the disk and apply it now once we apply generally it takes quite some time but since this is a recording i have fast forwarded it to fast forward it and it will finish in within some seconds but when you install it it will take some time now let's check the network adapter and change it to vmnet2 so that it will take the ip address from uh, 192.168.1.0 1.0 range okay okay before closing let's just check if we have iso connected yes so iso is selected and connected as well so let's go back cancel and let's boot the system okay so it's booting now okay it's in, it's asking us to install uh, red hat 8.8 .8. so let me just bring uh, this window in uh, center Okay. So it will take some point some time at some times. Okay, now installation started. So this installation you will see that it is uh it is running very fast. That is because I have fast forwarded it. 
but it will be comparatively very slow for you the total installation time i needed was around 1 hour and 15 minutes but i am trying to finish it off so that uh, we we have this session in limited time so it's installing rpms now okay applying the db updates okay now it it will ask for logging where we use we we need to use root so let's give root now it will wait for some time and it will ask for us to provide some details okay so this is a user license agreement uh, either you can scroll through it or you can just press q and go end of end of it now let's let's type yes to accept the agreement now once you accept you'll get this options where you can use uh, what you can select what type of installation you are going to do now we will choose software install click next we'll select all in one box console then we'll check a default option that is normal setup then we'll set the time uh, now you can see that current date is set to yesterday uh, since this was this installation was done by me yesterday so this is the date and time next okay we'll change the continent we'll select the time zone Okay, we'll use the internet IP protocol IPv4. I mean, basically, uh, mostly we'll choose the default options only, default management interface. And here we need to provide host name. So it is qrc.ibm.com. Now the IP address we are going to give is 192.168.1.10. Net marks will be 255.255.255.0. Now, as I mentioned earlier, gateway is going to be 192.168.1.2. Uh, in primary DNS, we will use COD 8 and secondary will be COD 9. Okay, next. Okay, it's validating the network setting. And it will ask for further information whenever it is required. Okay. Let's give the admin password. So you cannot use any special character. So you just need to put the simple password. Later on, we can change it. Let's enter the root password. OK. And finish. Now it's validating the user input. and. It's setting up the time and everything. It is updating the DP password. Uh, it will install the uh, DSMs which are required to pass the uh, data which we received. Then it is uh, synchronizing the queued map. So this basically takes a long time again, but I have fast forwarded it. So it is going very fast. Okay, updating the IP table firewall. Then it's stopping the services, uh, host contacts, HTTPD, Tomcat, host services. Yeah, it's restarting the service. And now you have QRadar ready to use. Now let's just check the version. So we, we can see this through my word. Okay see uh, it has it shows all the version and everything just a second okay so the version install is 7.5 up8 console ip is given uh, we can see dns and all this uh, thing now curada installation is complete so let's access it from the ui so i'm accessing this from my host machine uh, I will like, enter the IP address. Okay, I will enter using admin. 
So admin and what are the password which I have set in during the installation process. It will take some time. Uh, so at this point, uh, you under you need to understand we are running on four core QRDR and using twenty four GB memory. So at this point, UI will be a bit slow. So we need to change the password. So we need to meet the requirement of the password for admin. Okay, so it's updated. Uh, again, it will take some time now. Okay, first it will ask the license agreement. Either you can scroll through it, read it, or you can skip it by just accepting it. It will take some time to load. Okay, uh, let me just pause it here for some time. So this uh, this warning is showing that we are using temporary license, which is going to expire on 6 August. And uh, you need to get the permanent license. So this is basically trial license, which I was talking about, where you can you continue, you can use the same or you can deploy the license which was given which was uh, which you downloaded which is of 10 eps and 5000 fpm and of 3 months thing 3 months expiration okay let's go to admin tab and let's check what do we see in the system and licensing Okay, so under system and licensing, we can see the uh, what are the managed hosts, and then we can see the license uh, EPS and FPM. We can see here event limit is 5000 and flow limit is 20, 20 million. Okay. Under this license, we can see we have trial license, which is going to expire on 6 August. But if you would like to uh, uh, install the temporary license, we can use the upload license and use this temporary license to upload. Confirm. And then close, cancel. Let's go back to licenses. We can see this license is un unallocated. Now we can just allocate the license from allocate system to license. Okay, then allocate system to license. Okay, license is allocated. Now you can see uh, this license is not deployed. So we just we just go to admin, check what all, all needs to be deployed, and we can deploy the changes. Now it's deploying the changes. Again, this takes uh, some time, but I have fast forwarded it, so it will happen very fast. Now we can go to system and license management. Here we can see now. The event limit is showing 100 and 5000. If we go to licenses, we can see now it is showing event rate 100 and 5000 FPM, and license expiration date is 1st October. Now let's go to log activity tab. Okay, so we got error warning which is showing EPS and FPM license pool is over allocated. Now this happened because earlier we had 5000 EPS and later we deployed 100 EPS. So 5000 5, EPS license got overwritten. So we will go to again license tab and license pool management.
okay here we can see it is showing uh, 5000 unall unallocated license is minus 4.9 that is because we have now 100 eps license but it is allocated is 5000 so we'll set it back to 100 and 5000 now once this this is this happens all the errors are gone and now again let's go back to log activity okay yeah now uh, we should see these events coming in so these are basically system events if we are able to reach up to this point that means qradar is functioning well and we we can start integrating some log sources to qradar but we will also explore so here is the log sources application we can just go on it and integrate the log sources uh, through this application we can have pulse application then we have assistant and use case management manager application pre-installed also you can install further applications okay so that's it